You want to do the intro this time? No. Cash and Sins, <laughs> episode 8, A Hymn of Hope? Yes. Yay, got it right this time. So, so easily one of the most memorable episodes, I think. Oh, e- yeah, for sure. If nothing else, for the music in it alone, it's... The two it, insert songs. Yeah, which, are those originally in English, do you know, or... They're originally in English. Okay, so they weren't, like, overdubbed by... They were over redubbed by Caitlin Glass. Oh, really? Okay. They Actually, the thing... I, I guess we'll talk about that right now. Um, the, the original uh, singer... Japanese singer who sings those songs. Um, there's a little bit of English in the lyrics, like just some bad, little bit of gra- bad grammar and not great pronunciation. But uh, Caitlin Glass is is the voice actress of Janice in the English dub, and she also redid the songs. And <coughs> actually, I think she only did the second one because of a path because Sky, which is the first one, sounds fine in Japanese. Oh. So, but the thing is that their voices sound really similar. I was going to say either they're the exact same voice or their voices are ridiculously similar. Yeah, I have the soundtrack and the ja- they only have the Japanese one and I cannot find just the raw English one which disappoints me because I really want that one. But the Japanese one, their vo- her voice sounds really similar. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Well, I was just kind of curious because I really like the songs in this, especially the one when I was playing at the end. You know, the one I'm talking about. Yeah, A Path. Yeah, it's really good music, which definitely makes it a l- very memorable. But uh, other than that, something I did like they that they really kind of uh, touched on was uh, kind of Cashern and Janice's differences and almost like how they, like she said, you know, I'm. I was born to sing. Like I was born to give hope to people, and then she went on to say, "Why do you kill? Was it because you're born to kill?" Like kind of accusing Catherine of being, you know, born to be a killer, which is kind of like almost two, you know, polar opposites things. You know, opposite purposes. Yeah, you know, Janice is there to give hope. Like that's her whole purpose. Is you know this journey is she wants to give hope to everyone and then Cashern has kind of you know been just maim has is historically been known to just be a source of death and destruction so it's kind of interesting to see the two of them you know traveling together and I really like their interactions because uh Janice really seemed to understand that Cashern really didn't like that he you know was killing people and that he had to you know destroy so many lives and it, it's especially, I especially like it because, you know, at the end she's like, I, I'm singing this for hope, but I'm singing this for you, like, because she, want, she wants to cash her and to have hope, you know, to keep on going that even though, you know, he's done these terrible things and that he probably will mess up again, just keep going that, that, that there is still hope. And I like that a lot. And I guess it's even more exemplified how, you know, polar opposite they are, especially because during when she's singing A Path, that's the second yeah. song, right? Um, you know, they cut in between, you know, Cashier and doing what he is born to do, you know, just destroying face of all those robots, and then Janice, you know, singing, and it's really kind of, like, I thought a really poignant thing because they show a close-up of Janice, you know, finishing her song, and, you know, it's she's tearing, and it's really this beautiful, like, picture. And then they show Cashern bloodied and br- beaten on the yes, battlefield. Yes, those, those two images were very clearly drawn differently from the rest, the normal animation. They were really well-drawn still frames mm-hmm. that were just, like, art pieces, I guess. Well, that and that's what I'm trying... Then that's what I think they were... They were specifically done like that just be, to emphasize, you know, what they were going for about yeah. the polar opposites that they are it's so good oh my god <laughs> it 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 is very very good i really like this episode a lot for that reason i like a lot of these episodes if you hadn't noticed i'm like i like that episode a lot for some reason i thought that you didn't like the woman of the of the tower tall tower like based on what i said now or what i, I think that in the past i thought you remember, remember i think i remember you i thought i remember you saying that you didn't like that episode hmm 
I don't know. Maybe I did, but I, I, I've come around because I, like I said, I saw those things that I really liked that they did in it, so. And I, I'm pretty sure I've always liked this episode for sure. But yeah, this is definitely a great episode, so looking forward to the next one. So the, I do have a couple problems, though. Really? That I guess are recurring, not just specifically with this episode, but one is that, like, the robots that are portrayed at the beginning of this that are hunting down Janice and her gar her bodyguards, they're like, why are, why? Why are they hunting down Janice? Well, I mean, like, earlier I could see their, tell their motivation because they were searching for parts, they are trying to get parts and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's like, what are, are they trying to get parts here, or what? They seem to, like, have some kind of personal vendetta against her or something, like, or her, or her existence. Well, I, again, I think it goes back to the previous episode when I was talking about the robots attacking, uh, I don't even know her name, the woman in the tower, because, you know, and they're, like, freaking out at her for trying to do something different, you know? And I think it's the same thing. A lot of these robots are, while they were looking for parts, they also have a huge anger towards her because, you know, they just want to, ex they're, I, it seems Make like. Make everybody rot. Yeah, they just like, we're rotting, the world's rotting, let's just rot in peace, you know. We don't want to have hope, we don't want to have anything, we just want to accept the inevitable and just die. And, and nobody any, else can have it any other way. Right. And if somebody's trying to bring hope to other people, they want to squish it out as, you know, because they're dicks like that. So. Right. The other thing that I uh, have, have that is kind of like a question that's on my mind is like, like how Ringo and OG always end up around the same area as Kashern and running the same people. Well, it's like, cause it's, I'm like, I'm like wondering, like, are they following Kashern or is this supposed to be just all chalked up to coincidence? I, there's gotta be some, I, I don't think they ever address it, but I wouldn't be surprised if OG was specifically following Kashern because, I mean, I, I, it's a spoiler, but you, I'm not going to say it, but you know why he yeah, would yeah, be, take yeah. a particular interest in Kashern. So, I That's mean. That's true, but they never make it clear, so. I yeah, guess no. I, I guess I can kind of assume. I was going to say, because that if they were just expecting you to chalk it all up to coincidence, that's a rather large it's series rather, of coincidences. Rather uh, uh, hard to believe series of coincidences. Yeah. So, uh, I, I'm assuming that, that you're kind of left to imply that he's following him. Like, you Intentionally. know. Yeah. Because that'd be pretty ridiculous if, you know, he just kept accidentally uh, happening upon him. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say something again. Was Jan... I forgot about this point. It Was Janice human? No. She said she was created. Well, because, like, they should... It's just, again, the robot-human line just confuses the crap out of me because, like... Well, yeah, they do look really human. Well, and sometimes. they they flash back to her, like, younger, like, with shorter hair and everything. And that, I mean... I guess I didn't realize that. That's they... one of the problems that I have with the series is how it's so how it's so hard to tell sometimes between humans and robots without being explicitly told this is a robot or this is a human. Well, and like with that one especially, it's like I didn't realize that the robots could grow up and like you know grow more hair or anything like that. I didn't realize that robots like that existed. So, well, I think, well, like she like she said, she was created. Yeah, and. It seemed to be implied that she was ruining because she like goes limp yeah, after their attack. Yeah, no. I get that, but still, it, it was it looked like you know she was younger, so I don't know how ruining would make it so that her hair got longer. Well, I don't think that's what's causing her hair to get longer, but I think you're right that there was like growing like somehow. I don't know. Like I said, it's like, just, I don't know if that hair is organic with robots or what. Yeah. They got hair, but they're robots. Well, and like, it's just weird because it's like. It seems like there's just so few that look human, and then there's, like, the rest just look like absolute, you know, robots. And, like, you're obviously a robot, and I don't know why they make make it so confusing all the time. And especially when some are, like, apparently aging. I don't know. That just really bugged me, in this episode especially, because they made it particularly confusing. That it? I was going to say you didn't have anything else? I don't have anything else. All right. On to the next episode, which just happens to be my favorite. <laughs>